Hello and welcome to more Modern Cube Drafts. They brought back Karanos. I love this card. It's just such good value. Like you play it, you just... Either you draw a lands and then you draw cards, or you draw spells and then you just nug them. It's just like, it makes every turn feel so fun. I'm not sure if it's like the best card because um, it's a little bit expensive for the format, but if you do get it in play, it's absurd. Uh, I like Inquisition, although this format does depend a little bit more on kind of clunky expensive threats. I like Mana Leak, Stoneforge, uh, Nighthawk Scavenger is actually quite strong. Kind of want to like draft a Taxes type deck. I'm just going to start with Inquisition and go from there. I don't think this is, whoa, what does this card do? Uh, four mana four, protection from permanence with corruption counters on them. Plus one, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Put a corruption counter on a creature or planeswalker. Gain control of a creature or planeswalker until end of turn. Untap it and put a corruption counter on it. Whoa, that's actually quite good. So you put counters on stuff so they can't kill her. And then you steal stuff and they can't kill her. And then you just take all of their things. I like that quite a bit. I also like Delphi Voidwalker though. And like, I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit more aggressive mono black type stuff. Let's just take the Voidwalker. This card is so insane. Like if you discard something from their hand, like a Nickel Bolas, it goes into their graveyard and you exile it. And then you can just sacrifice Delphi Voidwalker to just cast whatever you're playing without mana cost. You just get a free Nickel Bolas on like turn three. Insane. Um, we could take a Freebooter. I actually really like Prismatic Ending too. Uh, the biggest downside is you have to play a couple colors to get there. Ooh, Sylvan Anthem. Not in love with the artwork. It doesn't quite feel like a magic card, but it's a really good card. Helps your team. Fabled Passage is a little bit slow. There's Doomblade. I like Mistress Factory as well. But I think we're going to take a Freebooter and just try and go Heavy Black, Mono Black, something like that. I just feel like discarding cards right now. All right, this pack we got Clattering Augur. Is there a sacrifice theme? Like Priest of Forgotten Gods or whatever? That'd be fun. Late Essence exiles a creature of Planeswalker. So just kind of unconditional removal is good. Experimental Frenzy could be an interesting top end card for a deck like this. You know, you play all of your stuff, you play a Frenzy, and then you keep going. So I like that. Um, can't block. You draw a card and you lose one. I haven't really seen anything for like a sacrifice theme, but if there is a good sack out list, this card does seem good. I'm just going to take Flay Essence though. It's pretty decent like removal. Here there's a Croxa. Some good red of wooded foothills rip apart. I'm just going to take the Croxa. I don't know, that seems fun. All right, Scrap Heap Scrounger is good. Bone Treader is good. Swiss Spear is good. Mutavolt. Um, also, Priest of Fell Rights, actually. This is a good reanimator card. The artwork is awesome. Just look at that. She's like got two elk, deer, something like that, and they're just hanging out. Um, I think we're going to go for Scrap Heap, though. It's just going to go well in so many different types of decks. Most likely, we're going to be aggressive. Just what I'm feeling. And then maybe we can get Bone Shredder to come around. Um, okay, not a lot of cards that we're looking for. It's insane that Urza went that late. This card is so good. Like, we get Extinction Event, which is fine. Um, I don't love it. I could take a Forked Bolt or start moving into white with a Believing Ring and Student of Warfare. Like, I don't think this deck is going to be the type of deck that really wants an Extinction Event. I think we want to be more aggressive. I'm just going to take this Forked Bolt and hope that Black Red is open. This is one of my favorite archetypes, and I saw some red cards going around late in the last couple packs. So if people still keep ignoring red, I, I don't mind moving into that. Yeah, all right, well, I chose correctly. Maybe Red White is where we're supposed to be. Aurelia is a really absurd card. She's a 4 mana 2 5 mentor, and can just give a creature plus 2 plus 0 trample and vigilance. I mean, she attacks for 4. That's so good, but I think in this cube, we're going to go with Zealous Conscripts. There's a lot of Planeswalkers running around, a lot of 6 drops like Titans, and just stealing those is really important. Here we can take Blood Crypt. I think that's better than Bright Climb Pathway. Really crazy that Karanos went around, but I like casting my spells. Okay, we get Grim Lava Mancer. Um, crazy that blue is open. But it looks like our colors are open too. I mean, Blood Crypt going around is a pretty good sign. We'll see if uh, the red cards continue because black is kind of drying up after the first like three packs. Or it's just not in the packs. Oops, sorry, I just uh, missed this pack. I realized I'm recording and there's something wrong with my bitrate. So I'm sorry if these last couple of videos are a bit fuzzy. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, I took that. We're going to take on Burial Rites, I guess. Or I don't know. There's a lot of weird cards. I'll take on Burial Rites. Exquisite Firecraft is just good. Burn, I'll take that. Monastery Swift Spear is huge. Okay, so red is open. Student of Warfare too. 
Um, black doesn't appear to be really anywhere open, but I'm going to look at my bitrate really quick. Eh, I don't know, maybe they're fine. I'll look at the video when I'm done. So, Hero Box at Ridge is good. Anger of the Gods is good. I guess the question is, do I like want to continue pursuing black because Fatal Push, Shriek Maw, Murderous Cut are all halfway decent? Or do I want to move into Mono Red or Mono White? I think given what I was seeing in the last pack, I'm just going to take Hero Vox and Ridge and see what happens. Because someone took like the the sacrifice creature too. Uh, Flame Tongue Yearling is a messed up card. 2 mana 2-1 uh, just does 2 damage to a creature if it enters. And then you can multi-kicker to make it like absolutely enormous. This card's so good. I like Bell Striker. I've never seen this card in my life. Uh, 4 mana 3-3 three, three becomes tapped. Exile a target card from a graveyard. Put a counter on it. And then you can give it indestructible. Ooh. Okay, that seems good. Not for us though. I'm gonna take the yearling. Probably wheel this walking blister or something. But we are moving into red. Oh, there's a rankle. I like rankle, but rekindling phoenix is also just messed up. Although I guess I could take rankle and then try and wheel the phoenix, but I'm just gonna take the phoenix. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. Magma Opus and things like that. Colagon's Command. I do love me a Colagon's Command. Uh, there is a pack rat as well if I'm trying to be more aggressive, but this card is nutty. I'm not playing this, not playing this. Yeah, I think we're just black, red, and, or I guess at this point now we're red, black, but this looks like a lot of fun. All right, we get Koth of the Hammer. I do really, really enjoy Koth. Heartless Act is good. That's about it. I mean, we're gonna be a bit more clunky than I was hoping. I really like the, the decks that are like down low to the ground ones and twos, but Koth is a really strong top end card, and I have, Forked Bolt, Flame Tongue Yearling, Firecraft. I have quite a bit of removal, so I'm just going to take Koth. It's a Gold Span Dragon! Oh my gosh, this might be actually a deck that can play him and enjoy him in all of his uh, girthy glory. I love this guy. He's so cute. He's so fluffy. Oh my gosh, I just never want him to die. I have to protect him. We'll take him. And then there's Doom Whisperer. The ugly... This is like the opposite of Gold Span Dragon. This card is just like beautiful and friendly, and this card is... He's got a lot of arms. He should have reach. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I guess I'd probably take it if I'm going, if I'm mo moving into this direction. The other route is to take Lingering Souls. It's pretty good with Hero of Oxen Ridge. Yeah, I'm never really casting Doom Whisper. Let's just take this. I'm probably not playing this either, but you never know. Uh, City of Brass, I think I got to take for mana fixing. There's a lot of good other cards, but you know, I have a lot of four and five drops and turns out casting your spells is important. Uh, Fatal Push versus Shriek Maw. I don't think I need a Murderous Cut at this point. I'll just take Fatal Push. Just like deals with anything. And it's cheap, right? Our, our curve is... It's looking actually decent at this point, although not as good when you get rid of this. Mm, okay, I'll take this Predator. Don't quite know entirely what it is for. It exiles graveyards and it gets, a big, gets bigger. And then you can give it Indestructible. It is also a Vampire Dragon, which is kind of cool this over here for now. I don't really want more fours. This feels maybe better than Hero of Oxid Ridge. At least currently I don't have any like tokens or anything. So maybe I'll do this. Because Hero of Oxid Ridge, like basically if I play Lingering Souls, this card's also going into the deck. What's in my sideboard? Two useless cards. <gasps> we got Rankle. Oh my gosh. All right, black is open. Get in the deck. All right, Rankle replaces both of those. This card's so good. Four mana, three, three, flying haste. So like it's good in aggro decks. Then you can make each player discard a card like every turn if you want to. So it's good in like stack stacks. Um, you can make them lose life and draw a card. So like they're losing life and then you get more mana or cards to like burn them out. You can sacrifice creatures. Like it just does everything you want it to do. It's got cool kind of creepy artwork. This foot looks absolutely massive. Yeah, it's just a good card. Here's Godless Shrine. I mean, that makes fetch lands help our mana a little bit. Otherwise we can take read the bones. Have enough playables. I'm going to take this in case I get like a... I don't know, a black, white, or a red, white fetch or something. We're going to take Grist, I guess. I don't know. Not playing any of these. Take Giver of Runes. Last pick, Silverblade. Okay. Yeah, Mardu is very open. I'm just confused because, like, ooh, there's a Lightning Bolt. Probably going to take that. Dam is a really good card, too. Two mana, destroy a creature. This artwork is so good. I like that. I love Profane Command, Regisaur, Thunder Maw. But it's really hard to pass up on the efficiency of just a lightning bolt. We'll take that. What does this card do? Four mana, three, two. Discard a card. You may cast a creature spell from your graveyard. And then if you cast a creature that way, it gains haste. That's kind of sweet. There's that. There's Young Pyromancer, Bonfire of the Damned. 
Duress, probably for the sideboard. I don't love main decking Duress. Right now with Pyromancer, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't think I have enough to really love Pyromancer, but it does make my curve really nice. It's really good with Hero Box and Ridge as well. Alright, I'll try out a Pyromancer. Bone Shards, Seasoned Pyromancer. I like this one a lot more. Expressive Iteration is a messed up card. And then there's a Chupacabra. Uh, I think when in doubt, I'm just going to take the cheaper card for now. There's also two black cards I want. And only one uh, Pyromancer. Ooh. Ooh, a lot of good cards. Chandra Accolade of Flame. This is three or less? Yeah, so this can cast Flay Essence, Kolagon's Command, Exquisite Firecraft, Forked Bolt, Fatal Push, or Lightning Bolt, Fork. Yeah, this seems very good. She also makes two 1-1s. One um, I like that. I like Phyrexian Arena. I don't think I'm going to have the mana for it. And Phoenix of Ash is pretty good too, but Chandra seems really good. I'm probably playing Hero of Accident Ridge now. With Pyromancer and Chandra, like that seems so good. Dragon Skull Summit, I don't think I can take anything else. Um, there's a lot of great cards here, but like I just need to cast my spells. Um, okay, there's Luris. That's interesting. Royal Eruption deals 3 damage to any target. If it was kicked, it deals 5 damage. Oh, I think I'm taking this instead. Like Luris is cool. Mimic Vat is interesting, but this just like really fits the theme of Pyromancer, Chandra, Direct Burn. Scales well in the late game, like it's just a good card. So right now we have I'll be sideboarding these. 29 with 5. This is 24 with 16 lands. Um, the way this deck is looking, I probably want 17. I have these like really good 5s. I could do the classic Caleb and take Goldspan Dragon and then cut it from the deck too. That's always an option. Oh, uh, okay. Some interesting things here. There's Collective Brutality. That is kind of direct burn, right? You can do two. You can kill a creature. There's Roast. And then there's Magmatic Sinkhole. I feel like Sinkhole is the best card here. Um, the only downside is that it cannot be flashed back with Chandra, which is relatively minor. I think I'm just going to take Sinkhole. I, only, I don't have any Delve cards either, so this is just going to like get really good in the late game. So we're probably not playing this Godless Shrine. Honestly, we'll see with this gold span. I really do like him, but the problem is he's only good in like a very specific type of deck. Here we're going to take Mana Confluence, just have like perfect mana. We're an aggressive deck, so all these like self-damage lands don't matter so much. Um, and given that, honestly, I could probably bring in Lingering Souls now. I have three free white sources. Um, with Goldspan Dragon, that does go up to four, so that's something to consider. We'll see if it's worthwhile and see if the mana like helps it make sense. I guess I can also discard it to Season Parmancer, which is sort of a combo. Ooh, Profane Command. Target player loses X life. Yeah, this card's insane. Sorry, Goldspan Dragon. Profane Command is just the nuts. So, first of all, you can just direct burn them for X. You can get a creature back for X. So, it's like they, you know, you cast it for like, let's say four. Um, they lose four life, you get back a four drop. Or you get back a four drop and then you kill something. Or you just give your whole team fear, which is essentially unblockable. Like, <laughs> the, the most common mode is likely, um, you know, they lose four life and you give your whole team fear. I can take Shambling Vent. That makes Lingering Souls essentially guaranteed. Do I really need Lingering Souls though? I don't think so. I'm just going to take Duress. I'm not playing this. Now that I have Profane Command, like nothing matters. I can even flash it back with Chandra. This deck is disgusting. We're not playing God the Shrine. So this is 25, so I need to make two cuts. Um, part of me wants to cut Hero of Oxen Ridge. I can play it in the sideboard. And then now that my curve is much more like low to the ground, I'm probably comfortable running 16. Ooh, Bone Shards or Outpost? Outpost Siege is kind of sick here, isn't it? Oh, I like both of these. Um, I think Outpost Siege is unique. I like Bone Shards, but this is like a, a sideboard or main deck card advantage engine that I, I probably want. Like, I think Bone Shards would just replace Flay Essence probably, which is fine. Okay, nothing. We'll take a Gideon. Because I don't... Or Gideon would be really hard for this deck to play against. Take an O-Stone. I'll take a Luris. I don't know. Probably not playing it because all my cards are spells, but find Finality. That's actually still not probably playing it, but pretty decent. Okay, so I think I need to make one more cut. Really sorry about the uh, Goldspan Dragon situation. I can't really main deck Luris because I have like Season Parmancer and Koth and stuff I need to play. I think I sideboard Outpost Siege and then just run it like this. Five, six. Let me shrink these. 
So here's this, this goes here, and this is like a top end card as well. Yeah, this feels like a pretty good 16 land deck. I mean, my mana is very strong, and I'm just very low to the ground. I like this a lot. See so you guys run one. Oh, right, we're playing against Kyle CGI 4 SS. Oh, man. Um, so I'm on the draw. Any land, I get to go Voidwalker into Inquisition. I have Lightning Bolt and Forked Bolt. Uh, I only have 16 lands, so there's 15 left and 33. That's almost a 50% chance to draw it. I think that's worth keeping then. And I'm pretty happy uh, having Forked Bolt against the Windbreast Kites deck. Obviously, if we don't hit a land here, it's going to be not amazing, but we have three cheap interactive spells to protect ourselves. Okay, we don't hit it, but we are just going to... I guess we want to probably start with Inquisition and see what's going on there. Yeah, glad I did it. <laughs> Inquisition in all planes. Um, maybe they draw like an X1. So they play planes, activate Mutavolt, they swing out. Um, so we take four, they have nothing in hand. Land? There we go. There's our swamp. Uh, this is going to get kind of gross. We're going to doubt the Voidwalker. And um, the Voidwalker makes it so that like if I forked Bolt next turn, it's just going to do so much. <laughs> no! <laughs> they drew Glass Casket, all right. That was kind of the perfect thing. And Usher? Well, that's actually good for me. Now my Fork Bolt is just going to be disgusting. Um, and then I get to kill both of their things. They have two cards in hand. Yeah, this game is kind of over. Uh, actually, no, this doesn't kill both because they can sack this spirit. Yeah, okay, never mind. It felt spicier than it was, but it still was pretty spicy. Um, so now they can Usher and Boast. Actually, this is not over, oddly enough. They make a 1-1. One, one. So next turn, they're going to be able to flip Windburst Kites if they go for it. But Kite Self Rebooter is a great blocker. They only have lands. Hidden Dragon Slayer, okay. Um, I attack with a Scrap Heap because they can't block. And then we're going to Lightning Bolt the Usher of the Fallen, I believe. Because I don't want them making an army of 1-1s. One they do that. There's a motorcycle going by my house and I apologize. Let's kill this. Actually, they can attack with the Usher, but I have this X1, or the 1-2. Let's just kill the Mutavolt. Everything else I have blocks the Usher. Like, I don't mind trading off here. Yeah, they morph the Hidden Dragon Slayer. So they are going to get to flip Windbreast Kites if they want to. This is kill... Uh... Uh, it's creature with power 4 greater, so that actually does kill my rekindling phoenix. Um, so, what do I want to do? I can play Croxa. I can profane command for 2 to kill their morph. Let's attack with scribe peep scrounger first. Um, I can play Croxa and then unmorph it next turn, but I feel like I'm probably like going to have to kill their morph eventually, so let's just profane command now. They lose life, kill this. It's not the best use of my mana, but this stops them from flipping the Windrush Kites, and it makes sure my 4 4 and 6 6 are safe. Destroy a target creature with power 4 or greater, yeah. Okay, History of Banalia is definitely something interesting to do that. So, we can block like this. Are these knights? Create a 1 1 white human warrior. These are not knights. This is kind of a weird attack from the opponent. But I guess no matter what, they're going to end up with another, like, with three creatures next turn, right? If I block here, they make a token. Yeah, I'm just going to block like this. Ooh, that's really good. Oh, I don't have another red. Ah, oh, okay. Let's attack for three. Uh, if I could go Chandra into four to bolt this turn, it would be just game over. But I don't have the double red. Um, so I think we're just going to play Rekindling Phoenix. This makes, like, if they do want to flip Windbreast Kites, I have really good blockers. You know, they could have, like, sourced the plowshares or whatever out of this, but... Block here, block here. What do you have? Please don't be too good. Ooh, okay. I was a little bit worried about that. I do get my Rekindling Phoenix back. This is gross, though. So I take three. I lose my Kite Self Rebooter. I get the Phoenix back. He's into Pyromancer. So, ugh, okay. Well, that was sick. Um, let's just Pardomancer and make a bunch of blockers, I guess. Discarding both of these. I mean, Chandra is awesome, and I would love to get back, like, Lightning Bolts or whatever, but this seems okay. 
Blood Crypt Mountain. All right, we'll play Blood Crypt Tapped. Attack with Scrap Heap Scrounger, and just make sure I don't die next turn. So the one knight is big. I can now block Usher. They only have two cards in hand. They draw a Lurth. Uh, that gets back Selfless Spirit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, this is very bad. I mean, this is a free block. Chump block. This can force them to activate Selfless Spirit. Wow, Lurus was insane there. Holy cow. I draw a Swamp. Um, am I dead? I can Crocs them down to six life. Taking five. So they're just going to get indestructible every single turn. They're going to gain four life every single turn. I guess we have to go Crocs plus Scrap Heap Scrounger. Exiling Chandra, this, this. Oh, I don't want to exile Kitesail Freebooter. They discard, they cancel, they lose three life. Let me play our Swamp so we can get back Scrap Heap Scrounger. Do I survive an attack? I can't even win the race because of the stupid Lurus. <laughs> All right. This is just absolutely gross. I think I'm dead anyway, or at least very close to dead. Block here, chump here, block here. I guess I have to do this. There's no way to kill my own elemental. This was a, such a sick series of draws. I don't think I have any way to exile cards from the graveyard because they sniped my Delphi Voidwalker <laughs> turn two. Oh, interesting. That just goes through. I guess I should have forced them to block with the Lurus then. So let's scrap Heap Scrounger, exiling Kite Self Freebooter. Get back our Phoenix. Draw Young Pyromancer. Um, now they just get a free Indestructible. I get two blockers, so they're gonna have one, two, three, four attackers. I mean, this isn't the end of the world here. I attack with Scrap Heap. Um, a big part of me wants to attack with Croxa. They just go block, block, sacrifice. They take three, and then they swing back with like Mega Lethal. But then I will have Young Pyromancer plus two tokens, plus Rekindling Phoenix is the four blockers that I need. So this, I mean, it's possible this works. Discard of planes. The 2 2 warrior is really annoying. Okay, then we play young pyromancer. And then we seasoned pyromancer, 5 mana to make token blockers. Ah, the problem is they still just get indestructible. But if I had a way to kill my own creature, I could actually win this because now they don't have a flying blocker. I could still. There's actually cards I could draw to get out of this. I mean, uh, Profane Command would have done it. Let's make our creatures here. We block Lurus here, here, and here because we are at one life. Um, opponent goes up to 11. They're all tapped out. We get to hit them. They actually die right now. They're, they're dead on board. <laughs> right? Yeah, if they're dead on board. Crocs hits them for three. Okay. I'm glad I did not concede. I, I thought I was losing that game the entire game. And then I won. And I literally don't have any explanation. Um, this doesn't quite answer it. I mean, I have a lot of answers to whatever it was they were doing. Hero of Oxid Ridge is creatures with power one or less can't block. I think we're just good. We have a lot of removal interaction and stuff. Actually, Zealous Conscript seems kind of bad against the tokens deck. Let's bring in our own Goldspan Dragon. I don't know if I got it in time. Man, the one time I try and bring him in, it still doesn't work. This hand's good, though. Yeah, this should have been a Goldspan Dragon because... They have a lot of tokens and things that like you don't necessarily want to steal with conscripts. Lead on Grim Lava Mancer. But Goldspan Dragon is like a threat on its own and it is effectively free to play. Like it's not so bad. All right, they have Thalia. That's okay. We can bolt Thalia. But I kind of want a Kite Sail Freebooter actually. Lurus Elspeth. Right, let's take Elspeth. That's quite good. They're going to have Lurus, so I'm really glad I did not bolt Thalia. We're just going to bolt the Lurus. And their hand is actually really bad. So it's Porcelain Legion, Lurus, Elspeth, Flames. And then they drew one unknown. We take two. And um, we might even be able to snipe them with Crocs, depending on what they play here. So they go Planes, Legionnaire. We draw a Swamp. So yeah, let's just play Croxa. Croxa. Black, red. They have to discard a Lurus or a useful card here. 
discard planes that are keeping lures. Uh, there's no point in like trading off. We'll attack here. So we get to go lightning bolt the lures and then Kolagon's command to kill both of the remaining creatures. Or they just hold lures in hand. Like both are actually fine with me because I could just Kolagon's command both creatures. Yeah, this works really nicely. Um, so I can't bolt yet. Oh, actually what I can do here. Ooh, this is disgusting. Kolagon's command. So we're going to destroy Porcelain Legionnaire, deal 2 damage to Luris. And that's probably just Scoop City. We can't block, so we'll just attack. They have no cards in hand. Luris is gone. They draw land. And then we get to Groom Lava Mansion of the Thalia. Ooh, Profane Command's pretty good. Yeah, let's just... Oh, actually, I don't want to exile. Let's just bolt the Thalia. Or... Yeah, we'll just bolt. Play land. Attack them. Uh, they can top deck some stuff, but we have Zealous Conscripts Profane Command. Yeah, they drew a non-land, it seems. They drew a land. So let's hold back Grim Lava Mancer. Or I could just Zealous Conscripts and start beating down. Well, let's just attack. Because I have Profane Command, like I'm not that scared of anything. Reboot Inspector is a redraw. Usher of the Fallen is fine. Scrap Beef Scrounger is good. So let's go Zealous Conscripts. Steal their usher. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then just like attack them. Then Grivel, Grim Lava Mancer, their face or their creature. Doesn't really matter. Wow. I still can't believe I won that first game. That was insane. So if they can kill my freebooter, I could see a world where things go well for them. Okay. So that is that. So we can go Firecraft. Oh, this is just lethal. Target player loses X life. Target creature gets smaller. So they lose a bunch, that gets smaller. We just pay everything. Actually, so they lose three, they go down to four. Uh, it doesn't matter. Both of these ways are lethal. All right, see you guys next round. All right, we're playing against Mr. Pick Kills or Mr. Pickles. We're going to keep. Especially on the draw, like, this hand's not ideal. A tap land isn't great, but we have our colors of mana. And any land off the top, I think red or black, just really opens up our hand. Koth is a bit awkward, though. Uh, I don't like young Pyromancer. Okay. I like a dead young Pyromancer. Bolting this seems more important than Inquisitioning, at least for now. Play the factory, go ahead. Very irresponsibly did not play around days there. But I was not punished. Wolfscar Mage with double white available. Okay. There's our mountain. That's great. Uh, we're going to go mountain, with spear into inquisition. And this could be bad if they have like the, the white spell that exiles. But I do get in for damage at least. Oh, okay. Their hand is full of nonsense. Attack. So face fetters means I need to be a little bit protective of my planeswalkers. But their hand is really bad. So, like, I'm not that concerned as long as I can draw one more land. And maybe I wasn't even supposed to attack. Okay, they don't do anything. We draw a Magmatic Sinkhole. That's quite good. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'll give them a Fetters target. Because if they don't Fetter Chandra, like, this is huge. This also does three extra damage. Create two elementals. I don't know, maybe I should have waited until I cut a Flashback Bolt. But it felt like doing literally nothing with my mana is, like, not really where I want to be. That... That's probably too greedy. But I guess if I do it the other way, then they like... No, actually, that it's probably just better to wait. I was thinking like they uh, fetters my Swiss Spear and kill Chandra, but Soulscar Mage would be dead in that situation. Oh, they have Incinerate. Okay. They still have Face Fetters for like Koth or something. I don't love it. But I at least like did trade for a card out of their hand with Chandra. There is the Mountain. Um... I can cough and that just lets them fetters. Just play a mountain, attack for one, and pass. Mistress Factory does a really good job of blocking Soulscar Mage. We want to incentivize them to fetters the Swift Spear, so they play land. That's not good. Okay. Well, I definitely missed my turn with cough. They fetters one unknown. If I can draw a black source, that'd be pretty good. Oh wow, they're attacking? I mean, if they happen to have a burn spell here, it's bad, but that's one card in their hand. 
This feels more like they just forgot. And there's no reason to pump. That worked out really nicely. <laughs> um, I can sinkhole the Cloud Goat Ranger right now. Seems probably worthwhile. Yeah, they just didn't read the card. Okay, another mountain. Ugh. So I think I, it's possible that I could convince them to face fetters by Mistress Factory. So I'm not going to do anything here yet. And um, for those wondering, this is why I took like City of Brass and whatever so highly. Because being able to cast your spells is important. What is this much mana? Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Oh geez, that's a problem. Uh, Profane Command is a little bit away from being able to deal with that. I do like the conscripts. I don't have any way to kill it, but it's gonna be like it's gonna be a long time before I ever have a way to kill it. Let's conscripts take the worm coil. Hit them for six. I don't see really much point in attacking with the conscripts. Because they're just gonna gain a whole bunch of life. Like I'm not racing. But if I can draw a black source, I can go Delthy Voidwalker into something to kill Worm Coil Engine. It'll be exiled, and then I can just get the Worm Coil Engine. My opponent should definitely be attacking here. Yeah, they do. I take six. I could uh, trade Mistress Factory and Zealous Conscripts for Worm Coil, and then the tokens are easier to deal with. We'll see what I draw, though. Kithian will flip next turn. Royal Eruption. Three damage to any target. If it was kicked, it does five instead. Um, okay. You can give Kithian Indestructible. I'm just going to play Koth and then untap Mistress Factory so that I have blockers. This kind of promotes the face fetters, and then maybe if I can draw Black Source at some point, uh, set up for Delphi Voidwalker into Profane Command. It also sets up for just having a ton of mana next turn. Opponent drew a red source. How are they hitting two colors before me? I guess it's because I'm playing Mishra's Factory. Okay, so they face voters the Koth. Now I just have to deal with this Worm Coil. I'm going to try and take a hit this turn because getting a Dothy Voidwalker makes the trade obviously a lot more enticing. I'll take six. The the one two blocking the soldiers in Kithian is pretty good. Alright, deck. Black source or spell? Okay, Fork Bolt is fine. Yeah, I mean, I could just kill the two soldiers, I guess. This just makes it so that Kithian doesn't um, flip easily. The problem with this trade is now if I draw a black source, I can't just like, like without having Koth, I can't just straight up Profane Command away the Worm Coil. But we'll see. They're going to attack for six. I could chump with Monastery Swiss Spear now. I feel like that actually might be worthwhile. Black. Flame Tongue Yearling. We're definitely going to kick this once. This is going to do three. Man, I'm like just shy of doing everything. Um, now I, I probably just double block Worm Coil. Wait, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't give Kithian Indestructible. Okay. Now there's hope. Now I just double block Worm Coil and hope that that goes through. I can't believe they didn't just save him. Oh boy. Okay, we're still back to dead. Um, can I even afford- I mean, I have to block now, because Mirror Battle Sphere does 8 to the face. Man, if I just had a Void Walker. Alright, we double block. We lose all of our creatures. I need to draw Colgon's command now. And... K command? K command! No! <laughs> uh, we're just dead, alright. That's unfortunate. They definitely misplayed, but we just got wrecked. Um, they have some tokens. I like Zealous Conscripts against their deck. I feel like my deck in general is like a fine setup against theirs. I just... How many Black Stars do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Actually, not that many. Okay, let's go first. All right, deck. I believe. We get to go turn 1 Swift Spear. We have Royal Eruption Removal. If I draw a Red Source, I can cast Flame Tongue Yearling or Exquisite Firecraft. If I draw a Black Source, eventually I'll be able to cast Rankle. This seems pretty good. I have a lot of 1s and 2s. Opponent does not have a one drop. There's a red. So I'm actually going to play a swamp just in case I draw a double black. But now this is really nice because most creatures they play here are going to get sniped by Flame Tongue Yearling. This card is so good. It also has that nice like old MTG style artwork which I like. Okay, opponent does nothing. Rim Lava Mancer. So I can Royal Eruption their face. I guess let's attack and see what happens. I don't think I want to waste a Royal Eruption. They had a lot of creatures that I like could kill with this. 
Yeah, and if they have incinerate, like this works out okay too. Lava Mancer. Then we top deck a swamp. We get to play Rankle. It's gonna happen. I hope they play Kithian and I can snipe it with the Flame Tongue. Goblin Crater Maker killing my Grim Lava Mancer. Oh, ooh, wow, they tapped out. Okay, this worked out. And I draw a swamp. Um this deals damage equal to its power to target creature. I don't have enough red to play that and use the Lava Mancer, so I think we're going to Royal Eruption the Soulscar Mage. It's not the most mana efficient play, but I like getting rid of their stuff. And then we get to kill the Crater Maker. Play land. Pass turn. We have Rankle, we have Flame Tongue Yearling with Kicker, we just have so much going on. Um, okay, Gideon is a problem. They make a knight. I guess I'm just going to Exquisite Firecraft the Gideon. I don't want them making any more knights and like, uh, wait a second. Does this change anything? I don't think so. Let's just do this. Is this player or Planeswalker? No, just creature. Yeah, we'll just kill Gideon. Play Mistress Factory, no attacks. I'm home, like still behind. So they attack into the factory. Um, it has summoning sickness, so I can't use it to pump itself after I activate it. A card, so play Rankle. And I think I just attack with Rankle. They condemn, they don't even, oh, that's so brutal. All right, they have condemn. Um, I can forge bolt the knight ally. I think I do that. Just like, basically red man is my limiting factor here. I was hoping that any way they dealt with Rankle would put a card in my graveyard so that I could then Grim Lava Mancer the Night Away. That sounds like a party. Yeah, I Grim Lava Mancer the Night Away. Um, but uh, yeah, this works as well, I guess. I can like Faith Sweaters or something. Ugh, Young Pyromancer. Wow, they really had everything. Um, we get to play a big Flame Tongue Yearling though. Lightning Bolt, yeah. So cast this with Multi Kicker, one. Because not having one toughness is pretty important. This is going to snipe the Pyro. Last turn. They have two cards in hand. I mean, they have like seven drops in their deck too. Okay, they get to play Chandra. But they don't have any spells to cast. Ooh, and I'm going to draw my Chandra eventually. And that's going to be huge. Maybe they're trying to cast Condemn, but can't. Okay, they target Mizzy of Mortars. Maybe they have a land? I don't know what's happening currently. Oh, maybe they think it's like it, you cast it for free or something. Well, I'm not complaining about how that turn went. They just suicided their Chandra for no reason. Ooh, Crux is good too. So let's kill Chandra. Attack Chandra, attack Chandra. Then we get to play Croxa. Snipe a card out of their hand. And if their deck is just full of like high drops, this can eat like a Mer Battle Sphere or something. It's going to be really good. Oh, yeah, that's great. So we need to get Croxa into play. I'm almost considering bolting my own Flame Tongue Yearling to get enough cards in Graveyard. Oh my gosh, that's very problematic. Plus 3 plus 0, oh, okay. Um, this might work out. I might be able to attack into Aurelia. They might block and then I just bolt. Because I can't block her. I just draw a land. Alright, we're attacking. Please block. Please block. You know you want to. You know you want to. Yes, okay. So that happens. We do the damage. We bolt the Aurelia. They have one card in hand. Crocs is coming down next turn. That worked out. They're attacking into my factory, okay. What do you got over there, opponent? Okay. All right, not complaining. Let's go Croxa. Exiling. One, two, three, four, five. So if they have like Worm Coil, they have to discard it now. Wrath of God? Ooh, wait, why didn't they do that last turn? I don't know. All right, well, goodbye, Wrath of God. Okay, Chromatic Lantern is fine. Croxa hits for nine. Inquisition. All right, Mistress Factory. I guess I'll save Inquisition to play around, I don't know, Condemn or something. Or I can discard it to Season Prime Mansion to get a token. So they need to draw Worm Coil exactly this turn. Okay. That came down. Uh, I don't really feel like I need any sideboarding except... No, this is the matchup where Conscripts is good. Yeah, I feel like all my stuff is good. Maybe Duress. 
Uh, it's such a bad late game top deck. Oh, Outpost Siege. Yes, that's a good one. And I'll bring that in instead of Fatal Push. Alright, this isn't the best hand, but it's got lands, it's got spells. And they mold the 5. They do have Thraben Inspector though. Okay, so I have Mountain, so we can just go for the turn 2 Flame Tongue Yearling on the Thraben Inspector. That feels reasonable against an opponent who's mulligan to 5. Ooh, Young Pyromancer is good too. Um, I'm going to start with the Yearling. Although, yeah. Because the Yearling, it's more likely, the way they've been playing has been very like snappy i guess like they just kill stuff quickly so if they're using a burn spell or whatever on the flame tongue yearling instead of young pyromancer that'll just end up much better for me in the long run and it's not like i can really attack with young pyromancer anyway Can we draw another mountain um i don't mind attacking here because if they have a trick it's gonna deal with my flame tongue yearling anyway down to three we'll play the pyro if this sticks and next turn i get to royal eruption it's gonna be really good it's possible I'm supposed to just wait a turn and then next turn play Pyro and Royal Eruption, but if they play like Gideon here, I'm going to be really happy that I have all this pressure in play. We're just going to hope they don't have Forked Bolt. <laughs> Please don't have that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ajani's good. Well, actually he's not incredible. So they can Ajani kill my young Pyromancer, but then they lose their Ajani. Wow. They went for Max Greed. I support it. Hmm, do you love me an outpost siege? It is very mana efficient this turn. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? We're just gonna do this. This just like guarantees the late game. So cons or dragons, cons means I get extra cards. I will not offer the trade. So there's a couple ways this could go. Um, best case scenario is like, I guess we'll find out. Perforos is a pretty good case scenario. Perforos doesn't do anything. And then they get like super greedy and tap down my flame tongue yearling again. That would be quite good. Yes. So now I just have the play of Zell's Conscript Steel Soul Scarred. Or Steel a... Alright, what are we hitting off cons? It's... Hopeful it's just a land. Perfect. We draw City Brass. So we get to go Mountain. Zell's Conscripts works. Yeah, it's just gotta be Conscripts. We steal a Soul Scar. We kill a Johnny. The other option is take a Johnny... And have him Lightning Helix himself. I guess we get three life there. Yeah, okay. I like that. Three damage to himself. And now I can still attack with Zealous Conscripts. And hit them for three. That worked out really nicely. Um, so now I have all this burn and a young Pyromancer hanging out. Perforos doesn't... I mean, I guess I just have to make sure I don't get burned out. I'm at 22. That's why I went for the life gain play. I might even block with Young Pyromancer. If they're doing nothing, this is really good. Yeah, their deck's just full of 6 and 7 drops. And this is why having a low curve matters. Ooh, Flay Essence. Exile this. Get our token. Play this tapped. Hit them for a bunch. Um, They could have Wrath of God. But we just have Outpost Siege. It doesn't matter. Like, we're drawing 2 cards a turn. I will say Mer Battlesphere plus Perforos would be pretty gross. The problem is they have to get up to 7 mana. Okay, Banishing Light on Outpost Siege doesn't really solve the problem. Zealous Conscripts is fine, but they're pretty much dead here. Inquisition's nice. Inquisition you. Yeah, Zealous Conscripts Worm Coil. So we just have Lethal Burn. I can't really see a way out of this for them. Okay, there is no way because I've seen their hand. Royal Eruption you. That'll be game. Ooh, all right, see you guys next round. All right, we're here playing against Nascent 13 in the finals. Let's see if we can trophy. Let's go first. Yeah, I mean, we got mana, we got removal. We don't have pressure. This would actually be a pretty good hand to have on the draw. And some, there could be some arguments there for playing mana confluence because we do have a double black card we could draw. And that card is also quite good with... Ooh, Crox is great here. Let's just play that. Um, that card is also good with... Uh, like our removal, but it worked out okay. We drew a red-black card, and now we don't have to take damage. Also, this whole time, I thought that this was Crox's mouth, but this is the stomach, and this is Crox's mouth. I thought this was like, okay, I'm going to tell you. This, I thought this was like hair or something, and this was the mouth, and it was like just a giant thing, but I didn't realize it was like a tall, slightly humanoid-looking creature. You learn something every day.
And that also did three damage to them. That's actually quite good. It's like a, a mini blightning. They play a chalice. So if they're playing no creatures, this hand is going to be really bad. Um, at least Flay Essence. Ooh, wait, I could Kolagon's Command the Chalice. I guess it's a little too late now, but if they don't do anything, do I want to do that? Yeah, I guess so. I should have done that on my turn. Let's return Crocs and kill Chalice. Hmm, okay, they didn't have anything. Nice, now I get to go Mishra's Factory, replay Croxa, get another card out of their hand. And the reason for doing it this way, rather than just targeting them with Kologon's command, is Croxa can just hit them for more damage if they're going to discard more lands. Ooh, they discard Marshall. Coup, okay. So they're definitely a controlling deck, and Fatal Push is probably a dead draw, but I guess we'll see. Edron Archive, alright. <laughs> I am drawing literally only removal right now. This, this is exactly the hand I don't want to have in this matchup. Fortunately, our sideboard is full of you know, we could bring in aggressive threats. Hit them for two. And here's where Mishra's Factory just really shines. Like, our hand is super reactive, and yet we're still able to pressure our opponent. Um, I might just, like, start running out bolts. In fact, I probably should. Um, that way I can just flash back this Croxa if I draw another land. Because I already have Magmatic Sinkhole, and Flay Essence can kill Planeswalkers. The Fate Sputter's my factory. All right. They gain some life. I even, like, it seems so bad to lightning bolt their face. They just have so much stuff going on right now. But, I think I do. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Young Pyromancer. That's so unfortunate. We forked bolt their face. They fall to 14. We have Fatal Push on the ready. Um, Croxon requires five cards. So, that's a little bit away. Approach of the Second Sun. Okay. Yeah, this is just, our deck can beat them, but this is just such an awful matchup for the cards that we've drawn. Cast this with multi-kicker, take it once, red, red, colorless, colorless. So if they have like a board wipe, we're just like, oh, I thought I could do any target. <laughs> um, I guess one, two, three, this could be four. Guess I'll kill this element. I don't know, that was so, I'm just playing terribly right now. Uh, but then they have one card in hand, right? And I'm hitting them for five next turn. They do mill an island with search for his Kanta. They can crack Hedron Archive. So, uh, Approach of the Second Sun was beneath the top six. They mill one. Ugh, all right. They have Terminus. That doesn't even kill my creatures either. Like, anything that killed my creatures would be great there. But I can't even, can't do anything. <laughs> my hand is all interactive. I'm just going to die to this. Okay, at least I can kill Teferi. That's helpful. But I think I'm just going to get hit by Approach next turn. Yeah, they're discarding Pole. I think I'm just dead next turn. I'm trying to think if there's any way for me to, like, Kolagons command them. I can Flay Essence the Teferi. I can't even activate my own Mishra's Factory and then Fatal push it, because that just doesn't do anything. And this is why there's a lot of times where... Oh, they have... Wait. Oh, they're going to crack Keydron, right. Um, and this is why there's a lot of times where I play decks without any creatures, and this is the benefit, right? My, like, you can play against an opponent whose hand is entirely reactive, and they just can't do anything the whole game. I'm just going to concede. They, they have the approach, um, and like my deck isn't doing anything. So we're bringing in uh, Duress, Outpost Siege, Herovox and Ridge, Goldspan Dragon. Do I want Luris that lets me recast like a Freebooter and things like that? Potentially. This exiles cards from Graveyard. Uh, sort by mana value. So what do I not want? I don't want Fatal Push. Flame Tongue Gearling is actually pretty bad when they don't have creatures. Uh, Flay Essence. Exiles Planeswalkers, but three mana is a lot. Like I could just kill Planeswalkers by attacking them. Um, that's most of the things. Royal Eruption goes face. Uh, Forked Bolt and stuff. Hits their face. It's potentially, like, maybe I don't want Inquisition, maybe? Also, Zealous Conscripts is pretty awkward against their deck. So I guess I bring in this instead. Because I can eat their graveyard so they can never flip as Kanta. And then I can cut one card. Probably a 4-drop. Maybe it's just Rekindling Phoenix. They have Terminus and other things. Hmm. I mean, this attacks for 4. It gains Indestructible. I like the fact that it eats their graveyard. 
Oh, I'm going to play Phoenix instead of the Sinkhole. That seems probably worthwhile. All right, now we actually have a real hand that can do real things. Um, yeah, I'll keep because of Outpost Siege. Play Blood Crypt tapped. So hopefully they have some... Ooh, Freebooter turn two? Yes, please. Give me that approach. They have Mana Tithe? <laughs> oh my god. All right, I did not know Mana Tithe was in Modern. I always play around it, and I could have, but I didn't. So there you go. Max punished. Can't believe they had Mana Tithe. They missed a land drop. Old Span Dragon. So let's play the Predator first. They can counter this maybe. Hopefully it's not remand. Because I want to get stuff in play that like pressures them. They didn't do anything with their mana. Are they discarding the hand side? No, they draw land. Okay, they don't do anything. Wizard Firecraft. So I can play Gold Span Dragon and attack. Kind of like doing that. Because if like yes, maybe they can counter a Gold Span Dragon, but if they can't, that just gives me so much mana, and this is like very a bad situation for them. Yeah, this is nice. So we exile a card from the graveyard, it gets big, this is 8 damage, we make a treasure. If they have wing shards, I guess I just like barf. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's in modern, but if it is, that's going to be just disgusting. Okay, condemn is fine. Don't do anything. Next turn I just have like a ton of mana. I can play Outpost Siege. Face Fetters. Get more treasures. They gain life again. Forked Bolt. So let's go Outpost Siege. Naming cons. And so that just gives me a ton of card draw. Um, yeah, let's pass. I can Lightning Bolt their face end of turn. But I kind of want to save these because I do have Young Pyromancer. And they're just drawing running lands now. Uh-oh. Draw land. Okay, I hit Koth. Koth is good. One, two, four, play Koth. Make sure we target... They have a counterspell for Koth? A gate? Okay. Um, go ahead. Eugen Archive. I mean, that gives them up to approach mana. I need, to, I need to do 20 damage very quickly. Duress is very helpful. Duress you. So... Ooh, they have all his dust as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... I think I just have to take Approach, because the rest of the hand doesn't really do anything. Um, they can all his dust killing my Outpost Siege, but yeah, let's just take this. Play City of Brass. And we have answers to Teferi now, so we pass turn. So we know their hand. Oh, they can't even play Teferi, because they don't have blue. <laughs> they draw the blue, okay. Oh man. So they probably all his dust, is my guess, because that's really good on this board, yeah. I mean, they've had the draws when they needed them, and I have not. Play this, pass turns. All his dust is gone, so they just have Terminus to Fairy. What did they draw? <laughs> what do they have? Glenelwind! <laughs> oh my gosh, this is deeply frustrating. Glenelendra against this hand. Cool. Um, the benefit is, like... There's so many draws here that would be very good for me. All of them are creatures because Terminus makes Glen worse. Rankle is really good here. So it's hard to complain too much. So we play Rankle, they can't counter it. In Terminus the Rankle, but that takes a lot. So we attack for three. They block. Okay. That's quite strange. All right. You have your Glen. Then they have Teferi Terminus in hand. I'm not going to fork to Bolt because if they play Teferi, they're tapped out of blue anyway. <laughs> All right, yep, you got it. Um, discard a card, it gains hexproof, tap it. So, how do I do this? Royal Eruption. Let's start with Forked Bolt, one and one. Whenever you draw a card, it gets bigger. Oh, I guess if they tap it, then it's going to get sacrificed to Rankle anyway. So this actually works out reasonably well. I can Exquisite Firecraft the Dream Trawler. And I'm trading this for either Teferi or Terminus. Okay. That seems fine to me. They just let it die. Alright. I guess that makes sense. We attack. Um, I think I am going to make each player draw a card and lose one life here. I could make each player discard a card as well. Basically, do I want to trade like Royal Eruption for Teferi? Hmm, maybe I do make them discard. 
Ah, Royal Eruption is 5 damage. We're just going to go for a burn here. Each player loses life and draws a card. Profane Command? Oh my gosh, that's so good. That's so good. Alright, go ahead. So they can Terminus, they can Teferi phase out Rankle, but this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage to the face, plus getting back a Gold Span Dragon or something. So I think there's a, actually a decent chance that we win this. I mean, we'll see, but they're at 16, and I can... This is a lot of burn. Okay, play Teferi. So Teferi, they just uptick. Next turn, they phase out, I guess. They discard a land. They can also cash in Hedron Archive for a card if they want. Okay, we hit a land. Um, so I don't really want to Profane Command before they Terminus, because that's going to put my... Uh, Goldspan Dragon on the bottom. Although I could Profane Command and get Kitesel Freebooter, I guess, and take their Terminus. Teferi's gone. They only have two cards in hand. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. So they would fall to seven, and then this is lethal next turn. Um, let's move to combat and see if they let me attack with Rankle. Okay, they do. I guess I just attack them. Let's turn around to the stack. Um, I could put them down to 12. They don't have any blue mana available. So I just hit them with a giant profane command now. That seems worthwhile. I could also make them discard and then draw, because I could just get rid of this mana confluence. Okay. That, that makes sure they're not up on cards. And they already manatized me this game. Ooh, Young Pyromancer? That'll be good for later turns. So, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Target player loses X life. They lose life, get back freebooter. Do this for the max amount. They go to 4 life. We kite sell freebooter them. Profane command is busted, man. They have terminus land. Okay, we'll get rid of terminus. Good luck. Oh, wait, they discarded Karn to keep a land? Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. I guess they maybe had land terminus and then they discarded Karn and drew a land. Maybe that makes sense. So now they have to phase out both creatures, or just deal with both creatures. And then I have, they also have to counter Royal Eruption. Ooh, and I have a Chandra. Chandra can just flashback Profane Command. <laughs> Alright, let's just move to combat and see what happens. Or Exquisite Firecraft is uncounterable, that seems even better. Attack them with all of them. It very phases that one out, they take one. Lightning Bolt you. They packed him negation. All right, that's fine. Now we royal eruption. Okay. <laughs> now we know about packed him negation as well. Um, not scared of Teferi. I mean, their deck is it's cool. It's just kind of boring. Let's just run it back. I think in general we should be good against them. They basically just have terminus and martial coup from what I've seen, and I just need to not keep a slow hand that only has four drops. Like, imagine if I just resolve Chandra. How hard that game is going to be for my opponent. Alright, let's see if we can get this one. Um, so I do have turn 1 Duress. Part of me wants to save Duress because a lot of their scary threats are like 7 drops. I will keep this hand, I just need to draw a land. I don't know, I guess we'll think about this Duress. I do draw a land which is good, so we can lead on Swamp. I really don't want to get my Duress manatized. I don't have a turn 2 play currently. I could draw Young Pyromancer. So for a lot of reasons I'll wait. Um, until like turn three, probably. Glenelendra would be a problem for me, though. All of Omens. That's fine. Rankle. So let's go City of Brass. I don't want to get this negated. Let's just see what's going on over there. All is dust. Condemn. Negate. Wrath of God. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I mean, right now their hand is pretty bad. Yeah, I'm glad I duress now because they would negate it any other time. So I guess I take Condemn and then their hand doesn't do anything against Phoenix. Or their hand just doesn't do anything in general, like it's super passive. They play an island, and I just need to draw any land. Perfect. Um, so they can negate my burn spells. I think I just wait though. We're going to play Rekindling Phoenix on 4. They have one unknown card. They draw a plane, so that's a second unknown card, and there's the third <laughs> unknown card. And it's Teferi. Okay. Wait, they discard Wrath of God? Let me see. I think they've also played Island since I saw it. Yeah, they played Island. They have Negate All is Dust, and then an Unknown. Discarding Wrath of God is very interesting, but I guess the fact that I left them with it makes them 
probably more likely to want to get rid of it. Let's just go ahead and play Rankle through the terrible City of Brass and take down Teferi here. Well, they're going to have to phase out Teferi, or phase out Rankle with Teferi. Back to Fairy, so don't give them a choice whether or not to activate. They discard Negate, which means now I can kill Teferi if I want to. This guy's so hard to kill, like, oh my gosh. They discard Island. They play land, so it's all this dust for unknown. Here comes Glenelendra. Oof, I, I really don't like to see that one. <laughs> okay, we're in trouble. Approach of the second sun, so maybe I can hit them with Rankle now. And like get them to start discarding that seems potentially promising because the their hand is like two good cards well i'm just going to attack them let's trigger onto the stack each player discards a card i'm just going to discard mana confluence okay we hit all his dust that's excellent um go ahead and play this factory play a rekindling phoenix or an immersturm predator they both attack for four. This one eats their graveyard. Or I can just kill Teferi. They only have one card in hand. Like, it can't be that bad. I guess I just kill Teferi. They can't manatize me. Oh wait, that's a huge kicker. I thought this costed five total. Um, I don't really want a double spell to kill Teferi, so let's just play Rekindling Phoenix. Or let's play the Predator. And then let's see, Teferi goes up to four on their turn, up to five on my turn, so I will just forked Bolt Teferi. This makes it just so much harder for them to... They discard Colonnade, so the last card is probably Approach of the Second Sun. Wait, no, Teferi goes up to three and then up to four. God, this card's annoying. <laughs> He's so hard to kill. Oh, maybe they don't have Approach, because we're going to keep rankling every turn. And they don't have enough loyalty. No, they will have enough loyalty, right? Because he goes back to three um, to be able to fade out Rankle. But uh, now they have enough mana to cast Approach. Or Terminus would be just gross. Okay. Okay. Well, that went through. I guess we move to combat. We attack them with Rankle and we attack Teferi with the Immerstone Predator. We can exile the All is Dust. So they can use Teferi's minus three to phase out Rankle and take no damage this turn. What is this? Oh, okay. Okay. Pull from tomorrow is fine. So I think we're switching from making them discard. Their hand is full. They're going to get off treasure map. But we've hit a lot of their Wraths. They phased out the wrong one. That's fine with me. I still get to hit them with Rankle. I'm just going to say each player draws a card and loses one life. Seasoned Pyromancer. Pretty good card. So what am I scared of? I guess specifically Terminus would be a good answer to a lot of stuff. They're at 13, which is pretty low. Yeah, it's just Terminus. Sacrifice another creature, it gains indestructible until end of turn. So, no, because Terminus gets rid of the Rekindling Phoenix token as well. I think for the sake of mana efficiency, if they don't have Terminus, Young Pyromancer is going to be good. Wait, is this phased out until my next turn? What does this do? Teferi? Until it's controller's next turn. Oh, wow, so if they Terminus, I keep my Immerstern Predator. That's awesome. They play Gideon. Gideon can kill Rankle. <laughs> this card is awesome. It's just sitting there not attacking or like not in play. Okay, they make everyone attack Gideon. A Faith Spetters the Rankle. And I can't activate this ability to prevent the life gain, unfortunately, because he's just not in play. Scrap Peep Scrounger. So this hits Gideon for five. I mean, I definitely want to attack with Mistress Factory as well, I think. I don't have any black cards, so we'll do this. And we attack Gideon. They have to attack Gideon. This is going to exile Wrath of God. That happens. Am I still scared of Terminus? I guess I can just sacrifice Scrap Heap Scrounger to Terminus. And if they don't have it, this is really good. I can also just spend my turn Royal Eruptioning the Gideon. Maybe that's a little bit better use of my mana. I'm going to have to do this anyway. So that way they don't like force me to attack Gideon again. Okay, they packed a negation. That tells me they're in a bit of trouble. But I currently don't have a way to deal with Approach of the Second Sun. And I guess I like keeping Rankle here because uh, if they do Terminus, then Rankle will be right there ready to start, like on the bottom of my deck. So I'll have more win conditions. Ah, that's a problem. Okay. Don't really have any way to deal with Dream Trawler. I guess I'm not playing around Terminus anymore. 
Grim Lava Mancer. Um, so Dream Trawler gets to eat my young Pyromancer. Let me think about this. I guess the only way for them to protect Gideon is to block with Dream Trawler. So I guess I'll just move to combat and see what happens. Attack Gideon, attack Gideon, attack Gideon. It's Exile, Pact of Negation. Gideon down, Young Pyromancer dies, that's fine. We get to play Seasoned Pyromancer. Discarding Scrap Heap Scrounger, Grim Lava Mancer. Trying to land. Not great. Um, yeah, I guess I'll play another black, and we can get back Scrap Heap Scrounger end of turn. And then Immerstorm Predator can block the Dream Trawler. And then I don't even know what I need to draw, like Croxa or something. Profane Command is like almost always what I need. Um, let's get back Scrap Heap. Getting rid of Grim Lava Mancer. Ugh, I really don't like drawing lands. Well, I think I just have to keep back Immerstorm Predator. So let's swing out with these. Settle the Wreckage would just demolish me here, but I don't think I'm in a position to play around that. Attack, 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 attack. Okay, they go to 18. Play a Swamp. So, if they cast Terminus, create a token. Sacrifice this on upkeep. So if they cast Terminus and I sacrifice this in response, I still don't get anything. So I think I just need to hold Rekindling Phoenix in hand. It's so likely they just have Terminus in their hand. And I think they're just going to attack with Dream Trawler, draw a card, put all my creatures on the bottom. Interesting. That's not what they're doing. Okay. Um, let's sacrifice another creature and tap it. I'm just going to sacrifice Rankle. Exile Face Fetters. Ooh, Voidwalker is awesome here. So, uh, seven. I guess I can't quite cast the Voidwalker, can I? Is it, like, Terminus just destroys me, right? It's not exiled or anything. That's the one card. If it was Wrath of God, I would have no problems. But specifically, Voidwalker is good. But if they Terminus, then I don't get the activated ability. So, what do I do? I guess what I do is swing out. Exile Gideon. Now I can sacrifice the Scrap Heap Scrounger to Dream whatever this thing is. 8, 9, 10, 11? Okay. Now my opponent's going to have a really hard time doing anything. I guess I should have also attacked with Mishra's Factory. The Miracle Terminus! <laughs> Actually, that works. I don't think they're going to cast it here, but they could. Oh, they do cast it. Okay, let's sacrifice this. They Terminus, that's fine. They're only at 7 life. If they have approach here, that puts them to 14, but let's do this. Scrap Heap, Exiling Young Pyromancer, make some Seasoned Pyromancer tokens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like, we're re rebuilding the army. They, they have 3 cards in hand. I have absolutely no idea what they could be. Inquisition is very good here. Let's see what you got going on. One of them's almost certainly Mana Tithe. Wow, they really did get me. That snipes my Delphi Voidwalker. That kind of sucks. Although, I have 7 damage in play right now, so... Oh, yeah, okay, game's over, I guess. <laughs> they did get me with the Inquisition, though, that's kind of sick. But they drew their whole deck and then just died. <laughs> okay, well, that was one heck of a trophy. That last game was very involved, and it was enjoyable, but... I don't know how they did not have any answers after drawing their whole deck. Ooh, see you guys next time.